In this video, we're going to look at a new feature in Excel 2016. That feature is called the forecast sheet. Now the forecast sheet is, as you probably imagine, good at forecasting based on historical time-based data. So you might have a whole load of data about your sales over the last five years, and you want to predict what the sales might be over the next 12 months. So the forecast sheet will create a chart for you, much like the one I've got over here. The chart can be a line chart or a column chart, but it will also create a table of values for you, uh, including those forecasted values. So let's create our first forecast sheet example. I've basically just got some sales data here, uh, starting from January 2014 through to September 2015. So I might want to forecast for the next 12 or 18 months based on this historical data. Um, some rules you need to be aware of for your timeline. You've got to have consistent intervals. So my intervals are one month. I couldn't mix that up with intervals of a week or a year. You can, however, have missing data in your timeline. So if you were missing, say, a few months or whatever, in fact, you can have up to 30% of data points missing and the forecast sheet will still be accurate. You can also have more than one value, say my sales value, associated with the same timeline stamp. So say I had two values associated with May, 2014 it, what it would do is it would create an average of those values we don't have that situation but that's the flexibility that the forecast sheet allows so we're ready to create our first forecast sheet uh, to do this we click somewhere in the data don't need to select it all we go up to the data tab on our ribbon and then in the forecast group we click on the forecast sheet button that opens up a separate window uh, we've got our data shown here. We can see there's a lot of seasonality in the data. Tends to uh, You tend to have more sales in uh, spring and autumn. Um, and you can see that actually the forecast, which is this orange part of the line, um, is forecasting, but it's not doing a very good job. It's not kind of replicating this seasonality. Uh, which we can see in the historical data. It also isn't forecasting very far into the future. So um, let's look at some options to change uh, those aspects of the chart. Well, the first thing we're going to look at is forecast end. So at the moment, it's forecasting to the 1st of March 2016. I want to go a little bit further ahead. So I'm going to click on this little calendar button. And I'm going to move the end date to, well, let's say we're going to forecast to December the 1st, 2016. And there we are. We can see our forecast now extends out to that date. I'm still not getting this seasonality that I'm seeing here, though, which would be important. So I'm going to click on this little options button. And down here, I can see I've got a seasonality set setting. It's set as detect automatically, which obviously isn't working here. So my kind of seasonality is over a 12 month period, obviously. So if I set this manually to 12 data points or 12 months in our example, then I start to see that seasonality within my chart. The next thing to discuss are these boundary lines that you can see around our forecast line here. So you've got a lower confidence boundary and a upper confidence boundary. Now, what this basically relates to is this confidence interval setting down here. If I untick that, you'll see that those lines disappear. Now, what we're saying here by default is that we expect 95% of future values to lie within these upper and lower boundaries. If I change that to 50%, you'll see that the boundaries become a lot closer to our actual um, predicted 
uh, forecasted line. Um, obviously that would be the case if you want 95% uh, to um, exist within the boundaries. The boundaries are going to have to um, be a lot further away from the actual forecast line. So it's interesting that the first uh, part of the forecast is a lot more accurate than the later part of the forecast. You can see that from our chart here. So you can basically change your confidence interval setting. It is by default at 95%. So when you're ready to confirm the settings within the forecast worksheet, just click on create. And what it will do is it will create a separate sheet within your workbook and that sheet will contain your chart. It is, it is an actual chart within Excel, so you have the design and format options up there that you can use to format the chart in the same way as you would any old chart in Excel. But you're also given this um, forecast table. So that will include your original data, but if I just come down here, you can then see that you've also got um, the actual forecast values uh, in addition to your original values. Now, I think it's also worth showing you that you can create a column chart as opposed to a line chart within the forecast sheet. So let's have a go at doing that. So we click into the data, we go up to the data tab on our ribbon, we go over to forecast sheet. So the toggle between line and column chart is up here. So I click on column chart and you can see that the, the boundaries have gone. Well, these were the boundaries that we had with the line graph. Um, now we have the, um, the boundaries between lower and upper confidence levels shown uh, in a slightly different way. Um, let's just change the forecast end to December the 1st. Let's also set our seasonality to 12 data points. And you can see what's happening here. It shows, it shows the forecast in a similar way, uh, but it does show your kind of accuracy of your forecast in a slightly different way. So there we are. So let me just create that chart. It's the same thing. I get a table, I get my chart. So I could add a title. Click on this little plus sign here, chart title. Let's call it sales forecast. And I can also use any of the designs that are normally available to charts within Excel. Let's choose that dark background. And there we are. So yeah, a very quick way of forecasting based on historical data, new feature in Excel 2016. Hopefully that's helpful.